Absolutely. I grew up in like a AG assemblies of God, Pentecostal, shout them down through a private, nice. like, um, you know, uh, household. That's so rare <laughs> for a little white boy. <laughs> oh yeah. Girl, I can, you take your shoes off, throw them at me. I don't care. Go. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I grew up in it. My dad was a drug dealer who found awesome. Jesus. So like I lived in the contrast of like living between dark and light and, and seeing that that transformation after my dad made it. Wow. And so, yeah, I mean, I was very spiritually sensitive as a kid and saw a lot of things that would kind of make a lot of people go like, wait, what? You know, yeah. I, I developed this spiritual instinctive mm-hmm. or spiritual intuition um, at a very, very young age. And I remember one preacher came and I was like, this is bad news. Like, I don't know. I couldn't even stay in the room. Like wow. the sensitivity was so high for me. Wow. And um, it came to be like two years later, he ended up dismantling the whole church like one by one. And, you know, wow. just like yeah. things that yeah. I was like historically correct on yeah. at a very young age where I had no context. I just had sure. you know, that, that kind of animal nature. Yeah. 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 That's something, honestly, I've been so prayerful and intent over the last probably two years um, that like that understanding of discernment and how do I like allow my body to read the energy of somebody else or the situation. I, I, my mom's probably the same way as you, where she's just like, no, I'm like, wait, what? I really thought mm-hmm. this was going to be great. And she's like, no, it's not, but you can do it and you'll find out for yourself. And it's sure enough, it's like the stove is hot. Don't touch that. The stove is hot. Don't touch that. Let me try. Ah, that's so hot. I told you it was hot. Right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, oh yeah. That's the, that's the thing about being a parent, but also just even a leader within business and the different realms in which we show up, even in the church where, you know, some people, I'm raising my hand to the some people, y'all, like we have to do it ourselves. And I feel like God is just up there like, man, why can't you just listen to me the first time? Get in the word, do the word and get, become the word, see what happens. And it's just, it's not that easy, y'all. Mm, that's very true. I love what Gandhi said. He said, I love your Jesus, but I struggle with your followers. Um, and that was a big part of my journey coming out of ministry was like that the Jesus I saw and I experienced as a kid didn't necessarily line up with the one that I met him at when I was in my early 20s yeah. and not necessarily the one I know today. And I think that the, our relationship with God and our understanding of what that even means is fluid. And I just encourage people as often as I can. Jesus is exactly who he said he was or he was the greatest liar to ever exist. If we believe the first one then like that's really the basis of truth that you need to know. And then there's so much more after that, but you made a really good point. It's like stick to the doctrine of truth. And I think that that will never fail us if we just stay in the consistency of what we know is the truth. It's really not complicated. We just make it complicated and we don't need to. And uh, I just hope that's a sense of encouragement for someone today. Cause I work with a lot of people who are fighting their foundation and that yeah. usually comes down to their faith. Yeah, And uh, their faith is just, it's held in this uh, frame of what they thought it should be. And I just am like, delete all the shoulds in your life. I don't care what the should is, just delete it. And following their own inner authority, like for me, I know it's intuitive. So I've got to go like, hmm, what's my sensing about this? Like, I will, like, I can smell it. It's like, does this smell funky? Or is this like, is this this a good thing, right? Yeah. And everybody's just different. Some people are more logical. Some people are more emotional. Mine's just more instinctual. And once I knew that, that really helped the frame of like my faith and then just go like, I don't know, those are my two parallels. I don't really know a whole bunch else, Um, but it's, uh, it's actually been really, really good. It's kept, it's kept me in such a beautiful place with my relationship with God. Yeah. And I'm sure even like you mentioned your wife and your kiddos and like understanding even how to like go into deeper relationships and connections with people like that. I mean, there's like so much intuition that's something we can really tap into as a resource from heaven rather than it being something that we have to reject. I think a lot of people aren't attuned in that way. There's not that spiritual alignment. And so they're either then deemed as overly emotional, which isn't a bad thing if you know what that is correlated to and how it's supposed to help you then make the next decision. Um, And it goes back to that victim mentality that you said, right? Even when people are holding on to this idea of anxiety and depression and mental health, it's like, no, it's okay to have that empathetic nature. It's okay to feel these things heavy, but you have to be able to then step out of them and understand and proclaim your authority and power that that thing doesn't hold you back. Um, Mm -hmm. I would be curious as you help these people from that, that place of unsturdy foundation what what is that like consensus around the mental health conversations and i would say crisis that's occurring but it's really just new language well i tell everybody they're not going through a crisis they're going through an evolution 
Mm-hmm. And, and I really see it that way. It's like it's showing up as a crisis, but I'm always looking at it because I think spirituality puts everything in the reverse angle. Yeah. So it's like I'm contracting and things are like I can feel I'm feeling like stuff again. I'm like, no, no, you're breathing more than you ever have because because that's what that's what it is on the other side. Oh, so I'm trying to get to the other that's side. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, at, the, at a central core, it's just I think that um, a lot of a lot of us have lived by our shoulds and we've lived by the things that we feel like we have to do. And, and we live by these rules and regulations that aren't, that aren't real. And yeah. so that's why I'm like, I love working with the revivalists and the revolutionaries and the rebels because they already have a chip on their shoulder. So I'm just like <laughs> leveraging that chip to go like, let's double down on the thing that you feel called to do. Mm-hmm. And, and let's figure out in a new world what that looks like versus trying to constantly patch the bridge because I think that's what creates a lot of those feelings of suffocating and feeling like, man, like the world is like, and even the adjectives or the verbs that I'm leveraging, it's funny because most people who are disconnected in spiritual alignment, yeah. it's kind of the alignment of your head and your body, which is your throat. Mm. And so I've just noticed a lot of people who feel suppressed around what they need to say and how they need to say it is where the, all that miss in translation and connectivity exists. So that's why I often will say, like, when, when I'm working with people, not companies, I'm like, you just have a whole lot to say. You just don't know how to say it. The, the biggest benefit that I learned was I just stopped judging myself, mm-hmm. which gave me permission to show up in the world the way I was. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, I love Jesus, but I'm a cuss a little. And sometimes that happens. And I look at it like like Peter, you know, who yeah. Jesus said, upon you, I'll build my rock. He was literally a cursing sailor who chopped some dude's ear off <laughs> trying to protect the thing that he loved. But we don't judge him for that. Right. But like if we hear someone else do it, then we could have a moment of where we go like, well, is that aligned? It's like, I don't know. I align with the truth. Yeah. And most people who interact with me can see through. Mm-hmm. They can perceive the heart that's really, really pure, even though sometimes on the exterior, it can be like unique or I can yeah. say some things that are kind of crazy. But at the end of the day, they understand the intent. And one of my pastors gave that to me early in my life. He said, Nick, nobody will ever misunderstand your intent. Like your heart always comes from a good place, no matter how hard you're pushing. And I think that always comes back again to the conversation around health and mental health. Dr. Joe Dispenza says four out of five people who end up in the hospital, it's all for emotional and psychological stuff going on. Um, So what I try to do is get people to the truth, which is getting them out of the drama triangle, getting them out of the patterns of life of shaming and blaming and victims and villains and heroes, and just get to a place of co-creatorship and, and to kind of go like, how do I want to serve this moment? Well, and what can I create with the people who I'm called to serve? And I think it just like, we just got to remove a lot of the mask, a lot of the layers. 